Welcome back to the Dino Bidala Show. We're live here Friday, April 12th. I'm Dino Bidala, and it's time for What Just Happened. As we look back at the insanity of the week, we have three returning comedians who are all great. Laura Laham is back. She performs all over the U.S., North America, the Middle East. She's been the New York American Comedy Festival, the New York Comedy Festival, and catch her in New York April 21st in the Big Brown Comedy Show right here at the Comic Strip. Hi, Laura. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. Thank you so much. How are you doing, Dean? Good, good. Good to have you back on. Look who's also back, Brittany Brave, who's been, I see her on Instagram, so I feel like I'm keeping up with your entire life. Brittany Brave, a New York City via <laughs> Miami-based comedian, actress, writer, producer, been on TBS, MTV, a bunch of other things, Series XM, 2023 named Best Comedy Act by Time Out Miami. Brittany, good to see you, my friend. Great to see you. I'm happy. I'm happy I'm back. I'm glad. And also back, it's Wally Collins. He's here. You've seen him on countless TV shows, movies. He's has creator of Wait What with Wally on YouTube. Also in the Big Brown Comedy Show, he's on gonna, the he's on the brownest of the spectrum. I'm going to be the brownest of the spectrum. Exactly. I'm the brownest of the brown. <laughs> the big <laughs> April 21st in New York City at the comic strip. And I'll be in the show as well. So let's talk about some some amazing things this week. So in Arizona. The Republicans, and this is the Republican, you know what's lost in the media? Republicans did this. They argued in the Supreme Court that the law from 1864 should be back in place. And then when the Supreme Court did it, the Republicans were like, oh my God, who did that? You did it. It's the Alliance Defending Freedom, which is a GOP funded group. They did it. So they've now re brought back to life an 1864 law banning abortion at conception, putting doctors in jail. For a little heads up, 1864, women, women couldn't vote. They were, the, the telephone wasn't invented. The light bulb wasn't invented. It's before radio, obviously before satellite radio. This was a long time ago, and this is what the Republicans wanted. So, Brittany, we've talked before about abortion and the GOP coming for reproductive freedom and for controlling mm -hmm. women. So it's 1864 in Arizona. It's 1864 everywhere, I'm pretty <laughs> sure. You can't really tell 2024 and 1864 apart um yeah i don't know it, it there's something about this issue that the gop likes to go as extreme and as humane and as as far as they can when it comes to this i mean you know in, in florida it was six weeks is what they you know they've decided which is already not fair not scientifically sound wrong mm -hmm. um and then banning it at conception regardless of rape or sexual assault or any cases it's um, I just think women should shouldn't leave the house at this point. I think that's the solution. I think that's what they want. You're giving yeah. them what they want. And yeah. by the way, in Florida, Brittany is they, you know, they were just rein yeah. they're reinstating their six week. It's now they're going to bring their six week abortion ban to life. And just for a little context, at six weeks, a fetus is the size of a grain of rice. But these were literally, but these Republicans are saying this grain of rice is more important than a fully developed woman because yeah. that's how they view women. They yeah. view as vessels to carry rice, apparently. Yeah. So, and at six weeks, most women don't even know they're pregnant yet, depending no. on their cycle, their symptoms. Um, so it it's quite literally trapping, trapping women. Yeah. So so Laura, wh where do you come down on the idea of you shouldn't have control of your own destiny in life? <laughs> oh, um, no, let's go. I'm pro that. Let's just decide on uh, all women's futures um, starting now. Um, let's get the GOP all of the power. <laughs> Oh my gosh. No, I, uh, you know where I stand on this argument. I know. Um, and I think at this point we need to start getting really creative with the way that we like approach our, uh, our like counters and everything. Um, like, cause I was reading about this Arizona abortion ban, like the 1864 abortion ban. And the only re the only way to, um, justify having an abortion is if the mother's life was at risk. So at this point, I'm honestly advocating for nurses to carry guns uh, go around any room where a woman might need to like have an abortion, hold the gun to her head and just be like, do it, abort it or I'll kill you. And at that point, look, you can have the abortion and the NRA is happy. We've already solved the problem too. Like it's a win-win. Okay. We need to get it a little bit more creative is all I'm saying. That's, um, it's, that's brilliant. Actually. That's yeah. going to be the GOP 2024 platform. It's very good. Wally. Thank look, you. By the way, Wally, Wally should have said Aid Mubarak to, to Wally. And because it was just the Aid just happened right here. Oh. Wally, this idea of 
these right wingers imposing their religion as law is, and they do it just openly. They don't care yet for how many years they uh, demonize Muslims like us saying we want to impose Islamic law. And we're like, we don't want to, we have no interest in that. Why do you keep, stop saying that? Stop saying those words because they were just projecting. So I, I don't know where any place is safe for women because if Republicans can control the house and the Senate and the white house, they're going to pass a national abortion ban that will even affect women here in the blue States like New York. It, it just scares me how, you know, it just willy nilly saying this is what we can do for women. You know, first of all, men should have nothing to do when it comes to women's bodies, just like women shouldn't have anything to do with men's bodies, because at a, t at a time they were going to try to pass legislation for vasectomies for sex offenders. And that lasted mm -hmm. about, you know, 10 minutes like, oh, no, we'll have nothing that but about that. But, you know, about this abortion thing, this, this is uh, let's keep it real. But it's just there's so many. Uh, 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 arguments about that because um, after sex, uh, um, an egg can be fertilized within like 24 hours. And if a woman uh, has her, her cycle, or, you know, her period, whatever, she can flush that fertilized egg away. So is that abortion? Is is because if they're saying that if it's a fertilized egg, hey, so, you know, so a woman can be you know a murderer, you know, every 28 days. So uh, I'm just saying. So uh, I I think before any of these Republican politicians make any decisions about the female body, we should interview their last 10 sexual partners, if they even have 10. And we should see if those partners would say that they know their way around a female body. And if if they approve, then maybe they can move forward. With Does it have to be 10? Because I don't, I think I have 10. I'm trying to think. I'm like, I have to go back like a long way. Like, you have yeah, the energy. It has to be 10. It has to be has 10. To be 10. I, love has to be 10. I, I love this idea. Yeah. yeah. I, you have the energy of someone who has 10. Most of these uh, legisl these uh, lawmakers have the energy of virgins. So, um, so I have 10 women energy. That's what we're going to call it now? Yeah, it's a compliment, okay. Dean. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Right. I'm, I'm curious now. What's, what's my energy? <laughs> what, um, what's Wally's? Um, eight and a half. Wow. Oh, I was going to go two. Is that, a, is, that a, is that a dwarf to have? No, eight and a half and you would have 10, but but um, kidney stones stopped you from getting to 10. That's <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Because Wally, by the way, Wally mentioned before we started that he had a kidney stone issue. So we had to deal with that. The uh, remarkable. So this was also interesting. So Donald Trump puts out a video on Monday, right before the Tuesday decision. And in it, he literally says that I was probably the person responsible, then a couple of words, and then for ending Roe v. Wade. And in the last year, he said, I was able to terminate Roe v. Wade after 50 years of trying, was honored to do so. And he said, quote, I am the one that got rid of Roe v. Wade. Does he, do you think he's not getting the room? Like, you bragging about overturning Roe v. Wade. This is why Republicans are losing elections around the nation. And he just keeps saying the same stupid thing. Because, and I don't even know. There's no doubt he's paid for abortions. He doesn't care about this issue. But he has to brag. So, Laura, do you think Democrats should be playing commercials a lot with this kind of stuff in it? And Donald Trump saying, literally saying, I was able to terminate Roe v. Wade. I'm, he's another one, he said, I was the one that killed Roe v. Wade. He actually said that on air. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first of all, I think Democrats should commend Donald Trump for being able to put together a full sentence. Um, that's true. In, yeah, in recent history. Uh, I think that's uh, admirable given his uh, mental decline. Um, I, honestly, treat him like the child he is. Like, if this is something that, is, like, treat him like he's having the tantrum that he's having. That's what I think we're Democrats should really focus on. So he's having it hit and like he's just like blah, 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 blah. He, and and it, you're right every day. Yeah. And some of these media outlets have begun to cover his posts again. Like he used to tweet when he was president. Now he posts like 20 things a day. Like you don't need to cover this crap for us. You, this is exactly, this is ridiculous. So Brittany, I mean, are, are there, am I missing something? I mean, you talk to women, I assume. I mean, are there enough women out there and it, it's, primarily white women who voted for Trump, black and brown women voted against Trump big times in 2020 mm -hmm. that are like, oh, I, I like Trump is bragging that he took away a constitutional right that we had for 50 years. I mean, I live in Florida and uh, the majority of the women around me, and I wouldn't say the majority, but enough of a majority of the women around me are happy Roe versus Wade is overturned and they do. large are. Trump supporters. Um, and then they look at me for thinking that women should have basic rights. Like I'm a, small dirty heathen You're a uh, witch. who should go to hell You're gonna burn thinking, this I, I am 
It, I had to have crystals in my bra right now, but that's unrelated to me being a witch. Um, but it does. I mean, is it I also, really is it really unrelated? Is, I don't know. Mercury and Gatorade, so who knows? But right. um, yeah, it's uh, it's it. I, I think it's just a, another example of him being tone deaf. At at that's the least claim we can make about him, right? There's a million things that we can say and right. and accuse him of. But I mean, toned up now to the point where not only is he turning off women voters and and liberals, but he's even turning off his own party. I feel like he just says, I'm the one who got rid of Roe versus Wade when people ask him about any issue now. They're like, What about immigration? And he's like, Don't forget I got rid of Roe versus Wade. And they're like, That's not uh that's not to- okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of remarkable. I mean, well, look, Democrats have to want Trump to keep saying this. Like, keep saying it, Donald. Please keep repeating this stupid line. Right. Oh, yeah. I mean, it just give, you know, just give him enough slack. You know, he'll hang himself. You know, but the thing that just concerns me, especially, you know, women in Florida, white women who, who keep backing this man, you know, it's like they're basically voting against their own interests. And it's like it's going to bite them sooner or later you know they just want this man i i guess it's that feeling that they're they're going to lose control they're going to lose that power because they, they see like you know brown and black people you know that's what they see or think that you know they're, they're becoming equal and subconsciously they know you know a lot of white women know and white folks know especially, especially these uh, um trump supporters know that you know they have the upper hand and now they're feeling you know it's it they're losing it so they're going to basically say yes to, to, to anything or follow this man blindly. But, you know, it's becoming dangerous to their own interests, to their own health, to their own lives. And it's just it's just really sad and really, really scary. And I just really just people just will wake up on just on that fact. Think about your own life. And, you know, what's wrong with equality? It's not that someone's better than the other one. It's equality. So that's a on, a, on a yeah. micro level, I, I mean, I live in Miami, Florida, which is. At, outside of the majority of the state of Florida, it's the most mixed politically, you know, and probably the most liberal out of most of the cities in Florida. But to Wally's point, it's, you know, I see a large percentage of the Hispanic and specifically Cuban population rallying around him. And it's almost like they don't realize that their support for him is a danger to themselves. Yeah. And I understand where the mindset comes from, from communism and fear of, I, I, I understand that to an extent, but it's like a lack of understanding and information and just ignorance for lack of a better term that it's like you're rooting for a man that that's not on your side <laughs> this right. is a bad choice yeah well yeah. And so you know but they know it's, it's also interesting whatever reason they like trump in, in their mind it all makes sense like yes because you're looking at objectively going like well it's in better actually in your your better interest to do this this and that but they're like no no i know my interest better and this is why, and whatever it is, whatever mm-hmm. it might be, whatever they see in them, do some of them, the Cubans view, Cuban Americans view themselves as white and view Trump as the protector of whiteness. I, I don't know. You know, is it about something about they're just really religiously conservative? I have no idea. I can't speak for them, but I can assure you they believe that they are voting in their best interest and they are for them. Like we look at it objectively, like, why are you doing that? Mm-hmm. Like, this is why. And mm-hmm. we continue our conversation. What just happened here? Laura Laham. Britney Brave and Wally Collins. So do you guys remember that eclipse? It seems like a long time ago, doesn't <laughs> it? It's so remarkable how life works. It was literally Monday. It's Friday. It feels like two months ago. Right. There, there was so much hype leading up to the, it was like Beyonce was putting on a new album again, but it wasn't. It was this, it was like she'd gone, like she had to go to a new genre of music, like square dancing. And like, oh my God, that's how much hype there was about this. Do you, first of all, Lord, did you, were you sucked up into the hype? Do you like, I got to see the eclipse. I've got to, I got to buy the glasses, that kind of stuff. Oh my God. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm a lemming. I saw all of the like news reports I was excited about. And like, this is something that I believe about like the, like, like, you know how uh, I feel like NASA puts out like a new article every week about it's like a brand new moon that's going to happen. And it's going to be the first time in like the next hundred years, it's going to be like a pink wolf moon or something. And you're like, oh, okay, I want to see that. And then you go outside and it's like the moon. Uh, every, like, just the moon. Uh, that's how I feel about what this like eclipse experience was. Um, and I know it's because we finally had like, a region of totality across the United States. So like it actually did get dark and um, my brother went out and like drove to Vermont to watch it and wow. took my car, took my car route. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I decided like, why not let's indulge. Um, and I did, I wore the protective glasses 
um, my siblings and my friends and I, we went to uh, Sunset Park here in New York City and did watch it. And there were a ton of people out there. It was like a really sweet like community event. Um, people brought their dogs. Uh, and then also uh, because um, I, Brittany, I'm also a heathen. Um, my friends and yes. I did a ritual ceremony, uh, which was an ancient Sumerian, I believe an ancient Sumerian ceremony that praised the moon god and we asked for additional blessings um and I can't tell you if it worked Love well it. or not yet but I will say that my socks are up this week so I think your okay. socks are up that's very good yeah. maybe the the but it's also wait I, I thought she said her socks were up no her, her socks are up. That's <laughs> a, the, I think it's those interesting that with all those people like I live on the east side and people are standing outside of Trader Joe's I'm like stop blocking the door I get it. <laughs> <laughs> because like they were, I'm not even kidding. I'm like, you got to stop. Off. It's an eclipse. But I got sucked up. Look, you, it's sort of like I didn't want to be sucked up into it. I'm like, I'm, I don't care. But I do actually care about that kind of like, I, I think it's kind of remarkable because it's every 20 something years. And I, I went outside and where we were here, it was really cloudy and you could barely see. So I had my camera look at it and my camera was like nothing there. And I just took a thing. Wally, what about you? Did you go outside? Did you stare at it? You know what? I was like, yeah, yeah, I was, I was like mm, humbug, but right. um, <laughs> <laughs> but I looked out the window and I saw all these people just like staring, and I was like, ah! So I made the excuse I had to walk my dog. So uh, um, I, <laughs> and you and your dog with the glasses, you're talking the glasses <laughs> on. So yeah, yeah, so it was he had the glasses on. I'm like, see, he has to see, he's bugging me, and so then I borrowed them for like you know a couple of minutes. I put it back on him. So he I wonder up. if seeing eye dogs have to put the glasses on because you don't want them to go blind. That would be horrible. Like, oh my God, a blind person with a blind seeing eye dog. I, it's also interesting when you think about like primitive people like decades and decades ago or like Arizona now, but like the idea of seeing the sun disappear, right, Brittany? Like how it, and mm -hmm. how that's interpreted. They're like, oh my God, what have we done? And even Marjorie Taylor Greene, who's an idiot, said earthquake and eclipse in the same week that it shows that we're sinners and all this stuff. I'm like, you're just, it shows you're a moron. But honestly, I imagine yeah. it was very, <laughs> it was very jarring for people like just the sun's gone. Like there's no, yeah. up, it's just gone. And what do you do then? Yeah. You're more like, more like Marjorie. We were kind of hoping that both that earthquake and eclipse took you away, but uh, I guess next year we'll hope was, for that. No. Um, it's, it is interesting. I mean, I think for, I, I actually did it as woo woo as I am. Um, and into astrology and all the things us white women named Brittany Brave tend to flock towards. Right. I didn't make a big deal about the eclipse, but I did drag every male friend or ex-partner who used to make fun of me making a big deal about astrology or tarot or Reiki and who was suddenly indulging in the eclipse and its energetic consequences. I did, I did kind of call their bluff on that a little bit or call them out on that. Um, I think for me too, um, the people who got to experience total, I just don't like the term totality and everybody who flew out or experienced it or went out of their way to see it is I'm just like, just another experience I can't afford. That's it. It's just a bunch of straight the white males that are like, I was there for uh totality and uh, it was, yeah, uh, well. uh, and I'm like, okay. Like, you know, I'm, I have totality uh. every night. We get that every single night here. So <laughs> Let's do this real quick. Did you know that Columbus used the eclipse to steal uh, food from the indigenous people in the Caribbean? Did he? Yes. Did he need an excuse? He was horrible to the indigenous people. But what he He's, did, because he yeah, he, he didn't just use his Spain. guns. No, he had to go to he, he had to go back to Spain, but he didn't have enough supplies. So he told these indigenous people, this this tribe, listen, give give us your your supplies, and they're like, no, we just got enough for you know for this winter. I'll take the he sun. Goes, if you don't give me your, if you don't give us your supplies. I'll make the sun go away, but because he knew they, they had astrology and whatever, whatever. So a couple of days, so you know they had That's the astrology. eclipse, and so they're, they're like, oh, so they gave them, they gave them all of their supplies, whatever. He goes, so then Columbus said, my God is pleased that you gave us your your food, or whatever. So your sun, the sun will come back, and then the sun came back. They're like, okay, cool, 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 and then they gave. Oh them wow, gaslighting one hundred and one, incredible! What, they, they what an amazing thank you for sparing them.
What an amazing pickup <laughs> line, but what a great pickup line for some guys. Like, she's like, I don't want to go out with you. Oh, really? Well, I'm going to make the sun go away <laughs> if you don't go out with me. And so right. like, okay, I'll go on a date with you. I'm like, sure there what? were some husbands who are using totality as a reason for cheating or or a lapse in judgment. They're like, it was totality, the energy. I didn't see her. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, right. Was, but there's, it, no, uh, there's no intersection in this. Wally said uh, astrology, astronomy sorry, is what he meant. Sorry. Right. But, but getting back to astrology Brittany, is there nothing with an eclipse in the world of astrology at all it doesn't it doesn't come into it i don't want to be the authority on this okay no um i'm just kidding um i think you i think from what i've read from what i've read eclipses i mean they are listen scientifically it is a special event it is a sure. rare event i do believe even if you're not a fan of astrology you have to think to some extent that the other planetary objects are having an effect on the other planetary it's all energy i do believe mm -hmm. that at the end right. of the day um and i think historically eclipses because they're so rare and potent they do tend to mean like um rapid jarring ultimately positive change in your individual life so like around the eclipse it's uh you know did you quit a job did you leave a partner did was there some crazy life change that occurred did you suddenly start ovulating did you you know i don't know i, I so if there's anything that was off this week or felt jarring it may or may not be tied to this or maybe you know you just wanted to uproot your life i don't know yeah that's it. laura do you follow astrology at all no, but as the more you say, the more I'm like, oh my God, yes, you're right. I can be indoctrinated immediately. I'm really excited <laughs> about that. <laughs> we have to keep her away from MAGA people because they will take her. Because they're like, here, let me, have you heard about Trump? Like, they knock on your door. She's like, no, have but sign me news? up. Yeah. And let me tell you about, like, so. Wally, are you into astrology or astronomy? Either one? No, not at all. It's, just, it's not that stuff. You know, because women, women will say to me, you know, what sign are you? I remember when I was dating and they say, what sign are you? And I'll tell them my sign and they go, oh yeah, you're, you're that. And I'm like, now if I, if I told you I was something else, you would say, oh yeah, you're that. So then I say to them, now, if someone says to me, what, what sign are you? I said, you guess, you tell me. And they always get it wrong. Really? So, yeah. Always get it Brittany, wrong. Can you I guess, mean, I, could you guess what sign Wally is? If women are going, oh, when you say your <laughs> sign, are you a Scorpio? Am I a Scorpio? Yeah. Told you wrong. Bird, no, no. she's just saying she didn't guess. She was just wondering if they oh, come on. wondering <laughs> why is Scorpio. Like are people with Scorpios are known for being bad to date. Is that I don't know anything about. They're they're known for being toxic. I will say wow, they're known for really? being a little. I guess so. That's that's what it. Is. But to Wally's point, it's it's you know it, astrology what, what is how we're all just right. But what huh? month Scorpio? What month is Scorpio? So people know. End of October, early November, like October 20th to like November. Laura, 20th. when's your birthday? Laura, when's your birthday? Oh, I'm I'm not going to tell you my birthday, but I will say I'm an Aquarius. Well, you can just look it up. I'm an Aquarius. So um, okay. I heavily, I heavily identify with Aquarius. So I heavily identify. I, that's an option. Yeah. I mean, I'm Sagittarius. Yeah. How do I heavily identify? Oh, you can just be like lightly, like okay, yeah, like I have some vibes. Oh, so I can be like, oh, like Sagittarius and proud, like I'm like like I'm yes. Palestinian and proud. I'm like, oh, what am yeah. I? Okay, uh, by in my hierarchy of how I self-identify, it's like Palestinian, Italian, Sagittarius. That was too low, but if I bring it up to the top, I'm like, I'm a Sagittarius baby, which makes me more Italian, yeah. doesn't it? Because that's just saying it like that, Brittany, right? Like if yeah. you're like yelling your your arch your sign, that makes you more Italian. Oh, I think what am I? I'm a freaking Sagittarius. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I'm Italian. an Aquarius with an Italian rising and a bratty yeah. boom. You know, it's and I identify with all three of them. So it's there's truth to this. You know, it's all it's all projection. It's all what we see in ourselves. But I'm an Aquarius. Look, as well, so there you go. Look at how much fun we're having, Wally. This is, could be you. This could be you if you believed in astrology. But well, he's a Scorpio. So. I don't want it to be me. I don't want it to be me. Yeah, but you know, know what? It, you know what it does? If you read up on it a little bit, it can save you time with coworkers and dating partners. If you really? want to subscribe to it even a little bit and then you find out somebody's sign, you, you can at least go into that relationship Relationship with a little bit of knowledge or at the very least projecting whichever one however you want to why don't you just trust your instincts who's gonna do that come on oh, sorry <laughs> isn't it better to have a sign like <laughs> oh the person who's half a horse 
half a person with an archery set. That's I, I, there are better relationships than someone else. That's but wait, but, wait, but that doesn't work though, because if someone's a Pisces and they identify as a Sagittarius, then what? You can't do that. There's no, like, I'm all for people who have gender reassignment, but not astrology reassignment. You can't do that. Yeah. You can't be gender, you could be gender fluid. Okay, cool with it. You can't be astrology fluid, right? I, I mean? no, not really. You can't be astrology fluid. It is somewhat Good. rooted right. in, rooted in, sci I just think astrology is, it, listen, here's the upside. It's an excuse for all of us to cancel those plans this weekend with a person we don't really want to see anyway. That's what it's good for. I thought that's what children yeah. are good for. That's what, no. Okay. And there is a construct. The stars are real. Correct. The stars. <laughs> okay. That's a good point. You, if you start, Laura, if, the Laura makes, right. If you start at the place that stars are real and they are, and I believe in them, I don't know if Trump does. They're probably a hoax from China, but the rest, everyone. <laughs> so <laughs> Unbelievable. All right, let's let's take a little break and come back. We have a lot to cover, including OJ, uh, the Civil War movie, which could be coming attractions and more. So let's take a break and we'll return with more of the Dino B. Dollar Show right after this. Ready? Coming right back. And welcome back to the Dino B. Dollar Show. It is still Friday, April 12th. We're still joined by Laura Laham, Brittany Brave, and Wally Collins. So OJ Simpson, who some of you might be too young to know much about, some of us or old enough to live through the trial. I was a lawyer. I was a young lawyer wow. when he, so I followed it. I, I was working as a lawyer, so I didn't have time to follow it every day. But I remember, I can vividly remember the verdict. And I remember where I was. was. I was in the bank and they had it on TV and everybody stopped. They but did? I, oh my God. It was, was there a cheer? Was there an audible reaction? Did anyone say yes. anything? It and? was each, it was both ends. It was cheering and like, oh, you know. Where, was, what did you do? What did you do? Left. <laughs> You love you just walk, you robbed the bank. Everyone watch the TV. Hawks <laughs> go behind the counter. Like she's taking the money. The, no one guarded the bank. Well, I left said, five thousand dollars richer. Thank you, OJ. You know what was really interesting? They showed yesterday on CNN. Oprah had a live audience when the verdict came out. Oh, the yeah, audience yeah. was there. And it was so amazing to watch. Not it wasn't exactly the same, everyone, but the white people, like oh. And the black people cheering. Yep. And I that heard. was just remarkable to see that in real time to watch that back played live. It was just organic. And the polling, and I covered this on my show yesterday. If people don't know this, it it, it matched that really well. About 70% of African Americans thought OJ was innocent. About 70% of white people thought he was guilty. And the one remarkable thing is over 20 years, both groups felt he was guilty. By 2020. 2020, they had some polling. African Americans, almost 60% thought OJ did it by then. Like, wow. so, but it was more of a cause. Like, it was more right. people on my show calling us to go, and the LAPD were horrible. It wasn't about OJ. It was about telling the LAPD, you're not going to do this dance anymore. It was just a couple years after the riots and Rodney King, and, and well, those cops weren't prosecuted. They were well, not convicted. That's one of the case. That's one of the case because the cop that did the arresting was just, he basically was a known racist. Mark Furman. That's what. Yeah, and Cochran, that's he leaned on that, yeah. saying, you know, you're very, very biased in this in this particular uh, in this particular case, and so that's what he, you know, say he leaned on that, and people were like boo, 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 like right, and Rodney King just coming off that Rodney King thing, so yeah, so I, I, I mean, the guy's brilliant. He he knew he knew which way to go, you know. The gloves, Brittany. Do you remember? And I don't know. I don't ask people's age. I don't feel the need to. But do mm -hmm. you? Did you? Did the OJ trial? Did you follow it or did you follow it? There's so much pop culture and miniseries and doc and crime things about it over the years that people weren't even following. There were children then maybe aware of a lot of it now. I was very young. Uh, I'm, I'm still 30. very young. I'm so, I guess, well, to talk to my lower back, it would disagree with you on that. But um, I am 33 going on 95, but I am, I am 33. So I was young and I was, I didn't have any sort of a full scope of what was happening. I do remember um, wanting to know, because obviously my parents were always following the case on TV. And I think my mom pacified me by saying, a man stole a glove. Don't worry about it. And kind of <laughs> <laughs> was like, your mom some of the case it was involving gloves. <laughs> Yeah, that's and all, I was honey, like, oh, sleep. okay, that's mean. They say in school you shouldn't steal stuff from your classmates. And, you know, right. and I grew up and I said, oh, a man may have stolen someone's life. Um, right. So, yes, it's uh, I, I think like it's, you know, I think it, it is a case that I feel like a lot of us grew up with and, you know, and all the ups and downs around it as well, too. So I, I definitely think his death is a, an emotional one and it's something that affects everybody no matter no matter where you're at on the generational spec, not emotional in a sense of, I hate to say emotional and nostalgic, but it's like by this point, everybody 
has joined that conversation or that storyline at a different point. Right. So therefore they all have a different interpretation and experience with it. Just like how you said, the statistics have completely flipped and new information has presented itself and whatnot. So. It's interesting. And Laura, what about you? I mean, did you ever watch miniseries or do- there's so many movies and TV dramas done about this thing? I like that you specifically were like, did you follow up on media because you didn't see it live? <laughs> I, I I don't know your age, but you know, even if you were alive, then it's it's. I yeah. assume you were a child then. No, no, I remember exactly where I was when uh, it happened. I was uh, in my crib, probably crying for a bottle. Um, that, that's what you you're like. You didn't like the verdict. You're like, I don't like this. I, I'm a little. Yeah. No, I I didn't. I I haven't followed up. Um, on any media. I haven't indulged. Um, but I I do listen to a lot of murder podcasts. So. I can say I can say this um, without looking at any of the deeds. But first of all, before I even start that, I do want to say, Brittany, I love that your parents turned this into a crime of fashion. <laughs> like that's beautiful. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to learn about murder sooner than like why lie. They don't anyway, want to tell yeah. you, right? It makes sense. Yeah. Like yeah. it's involving blood, Sonny. Someone stole yeah. someone's gloves. The oh, gloves like, oh no, that is actually a crime. Actually, let's do that. Yeah. This is a crime at the Met Gala. How dare you? Um, yeah. Uh, um, I, because I'm from the generation that, uh, didn't it like see it happen live. Um, and also like didn't really engage with it live. Uh, it, I don't think it had nearly as much of an impact. I'm ready with him passing away to put this to bed just so I can stop feeling out of the loop. Um, so this is a, per- this is <laughs> just personal. like, on a personal like thank God he's dead. Yeah. Cause I don't have to hear about yeah. this anymore. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm like, I'd like to stop feeling left out actually. Thank you so much. <laughs> I will say, yes, I agree with that as well, too. And I also will say that it would have been very interesting to have had TikTok around when this case yes. first oh. first bubbled up. Oh, I, I mean, imagine? Friend, wow. I have a way better understanding if I could watch some preteens doing a choreographed dance to the facts of this murder case. I mean, I'd fit. really, the, the, yeah, you know, whatever. They oh, they would have done remakes. If the, the gloves don't fit, you have to quit. It would have been a whole remix and oh, a dance version on oh, TikTok. Wow. It would have been yeah, like yeah. him with the gloves, uh, the gloves, like the like a sound, like a scratching of a record. Right. Yeah, there would you know, have been a- merch. There would have been bedazzled gloves that you could buy on Instagram and TikTok. You know, it would have been a whole movement. It's also yeah. interesting if that happened, right? Because fame, celebrity is has a value. And if oh, I wonder if now if he was acquitted, if OJ would have made a lot, he got sued civilly and he lost, uh, you know, 30 plus million dollars. The estate of Nicole Simpson and Ron Goldman won against him. But in America, it really seems fame has more of a currency now. So if you're famous at all, there is a subset of America that will like you. And I think that's because the hyper polarized world we live in, like Kyle Rittenhouse is a piece of garbage that he's the white kid who shot people at the the Black Lives Matter rally, and he's celebrated by the right. They have him at the tour. Right. So so I'm saying, like, with with OJ, mm-hmm. it was more of a shame. If he was playing golf, there are pictures of him. I thought you were gonna be looking for the killer OJ. You're playing golf. And now, if he politicized it, you have a, a built-in audience and you go out there and, and grift off it. So I think it would be different experience. And by the way, there was no Fox News when this trial happened. Fox News started a few years later. Mm. If there was a Fox News, they would have politicized this in ways that, that are not part of the psyche. Like They don't look back at this and go Democrat, Republicans, more the racial divide. But a Fox, they would have been like pro-cop. All over. He killed a white woman. It would have been yeah. this, They would have been uh-huh. talking about the black man killing a white woman all the time on Fox News. Yeah. And they actually, you remember, Mark, you remember <clears throat> Wally, you said Mark Furman? He, in case you guys don't know, he was the racist cop who would use the N-word and stuff. He got hired as a Fox News contributor after he left the police force. Yeah. So there's of zero doubt Fox News would have been like on the side of against OJ because he was black, but he was a celebrity, right? So there's that weird intersection of things where Trump probably liked OJ. I'm sure. Yeah, you know. I can see that. So it's remarkable. So speaking of Trump, starting Monday right here in New York City. Donald Trump's first criminal trial is going to begin barring something happening over the weekend. We don't expect like Trump getting sick, his lawyers getting sick, him trying to fire his lawyers or something. It really and it'll be jury selection for two to three weeks because to get a, a jury that's unbiased, it's going to be a challenge, but they'll get one. Is this the, tr- the new trial of the century? The OJ trial was the trial of the century, but we don't get cameras inside. So does that change it? So like Laura, the fact that we're not going to get to see video of any of the trial. Does that change the, you think the, 
the the obsession that there might be in America over the trial, as opposed to reporters coming out every day going, today, this is what happened in the trial. <clears throat> okay, I'm having such a hard time keeping track of which felony trial this is. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the hush money case, but it, it's where like... they paid Stormy Daniels off and Karen McDougal and the doorman right before the election. Okay. They didn't oh, say okay. bad things. And he had his affair with Stormy Daniels six months after his wife gave birth to their child. So he's such a special what, Whichever whichever trial that like put him in jail just put him in jail because i don't think it's okay for someone to be in the courthouse this much if they don't work there like just put him in jail That's i have funny. no idea what trial this is anymore i'm done like, or give him a uniform I don't he hear should be about a sheriff's it. guard yeah. he should either be part of the sheriff's department and wear a uniform because he's in court so much or uh, just yeah. put him in trial that's what i like that that's what Lord, she's saying like if you don't be there if you don't work there I, that's interesting take on it and so Brittany, what do you think? Do you think America, look, if there was video of the trial, I think yeah, America uh, would be like every day. It oh, would yeah. Be huge, but there's no video. So we have to wait for the reporters to come out every day and Trump coming out and lying about what happened every day. That's what I have a little bit of trust issue that there's no video. You know what I mean? Because it's it, I, it, the coverage and video for something like this would be cool would be necessary to want to i would want to follow along um so it, it makes me feel a little bit uneasy um i will say i'm, I'm looking 34 felony it's almost as if he's he set out to break a world record as the U a u.s president <laughs> yeah. with the most and i'm sure that's how he views himself by the way too as if like well have you ever seen another u.s president that's had this many felonies <laughs> i think not like you know he thinks it's uh probably impressive but i'm sure you know you, you know no matter what happens during that court case his response will just be are we forgetting that i'm the guy who got rid of roe versus wade and that'll be his i'm primary Right. And I'm sure he and Stormy Daniels probably I'm sure she needed an abortion as well, too. And I'm sure she was able to get it under the table. So it came out. He'll just say that was by the law. Uh, yeah. Wally, what do you think of the? Are you going to follow some of the reporting again? There's no video, so we can't. The Georgia case will be on television. Well, that, I don't know when that's going to happen. Well, first of all, you can't get away from it. So, you know, anything you turn, you know, you turn on a watch and it. it it's going to come up because it's just so salacious and, you know, it's porn, you know, it's, it's, it's sex. And so, you know, people don't want to admit it, but you know, it's sex sells and uh, people are going to be interested. I, I'm just curious to see how Trump supporters or MAGA will spin this thing that this, you know, this guy <laughs> had an affair, you know, an unprotected affair with a porn star six months after a child was born. How will, how would they spin this? How, how would they justify that you know he, he he's in the positive he's he, he's in the right i guess or you well, know they just mean? say by they, what they do is that trump says this is all joe biden weaponizing justice department and so when he's convicted of a felony uh he'll be like it's not a real it's not legitimate it's not a real conviction and his supporters i'll be fine with it if he is convicted i think he will be the democrats better make trump's first name convicted felon like every single thing they must be convicted felon donald trump convicted felon trump just over and over and over, because it will matter at, at some point. But I just wrote an article for MSNBC about this. The Democrats are not doing a good job giving any facts. Trump's out there every day going, this is Biden. He started this investigation. In reality, this investigation began in 2018 under Trump when the other D when Michael Cohen, his lawyer, said, I committed a crime and I did it for right. Donald Trump. But right. That's when it began. It began because of Michael Cohen going to make a deal because he was being investigated. Yeah. And yeah. It, and you don't hear Democrats at all going, this didn't start under Biden. It began under Trump. It the, the, thing, it's ridiculous. The, thing that, the thing that annoys me about Democrats is that they don't fight the same way Republicans do. Oh, you yeah. Know? And, and, and they're always like, hey, come on, man. We're trying to do the right thing. Meanwhile, Republicans are dirty. They're using, they're throwing dirt in the person's eye. You know what I mean? They're, they're biting the ear. You know what I mean? Like, get down and dirty just like the Republicans, man. And then, then now... You're not using the right weapons, you know? No, definitely. Out of the yeah, handful right. of times that you've had me on your show, Dean, and the various issues that we've covered, I've said exactly what Wally has said, that it's, I, I'm not, taking the high road isn't doing Democrats no. any good anymore. And I'm not saying that they have to fight as dirty as Republicans do, but they have to, they have to toughen up. And it has seemed like over the last, let's say, at, at least two to three years, They've lost steam 
it, it, you know, they're not coming as armed with facts. They're not as aggressive. I think I think it could behoove them to be a little loud, a little louder and a little more annoying so they can. It's it's just not a fair fight. Really? You're, you're it's not so they're not fight. really you're... playing like it's a theater is the issue. Like it, for the for the Republicans, it really doesn't matter what the issues are, what the facts are. They're playing like they are in a theater and they just need your attention. And Democrats are still trying to come into this like, well, here's the issue. It's like, nope, that doesn't matter. You have to yell. Yeah. <laughs> like, right. So you so you think like it's almost like improv. Like we should be yelling out like autocracy, dictatorship. Like, OK, now let's do a little scene on dictatorship involving Donald Trump. Well, I think it's like the Republicans are doing stand up and the Democrats are doing improv. <laughs> not good improv. Like really bad. Level one UCB right. improv. Where, They're where like, like, yes. <laughs> and. Right. And everyone in the class is like a salesman during the day. It was just there to get a little quicker on their feet. Like they're not really into comedy. Like I took level one improv. It was the worst group of people. Like one person was funny. Like there, and I was a stand up already. I'm like, maybe it'll help my stand up. And the rest were like, I just want to be better at public speaking. I'm like, then go to a public speaking class. I'm here yeah. for a career in comedy. Yeah, Is no, there this... a, a class? How about you improvise a class on public speaking? St get out of this class. Sorry. This is no, seat. this is a phenomenal <laughs> metaphor because I did a lot of improv, more than I'm willing to admit, because I'm mostly embarrassed before I started doing stand up. Okay. And improv always had this mentality of like, it's not even really about being funny. It's just about supporting each other. And that's the Democratic Party in 2024. Uh, good one. Good like, one. You know, you they're like, it's just I'll not, you, you know. <laughs> You're such an Aquarius. We're I really am. Laura Lam, Brittany Brave, <laughs> two of the three Aquariuses on the show. Wally Collins, he won't tell us his sign, but we're guessing it's something to do with a, a fish. I don't know. And me, Dino Vidal, <laughs> Sagittarius. So the... It, it, let's talk about, I found this interesting. The U.S. Coast Guard found three sailors went on a small ship in the Pacific Island and they got lost for a week. And the U.S. Coast Guard found them and the Navy, they searched everywhere because the guys got palm leaves and spelled the word help on the the sand. They really did. And the guy from the, I'm not even kidding, the U.S. Coast Guard lieutenant said the act of ingenuity was pivotal in guiding us rescue efforts. I'm like, we have AI. We have GPS. Yes, you mean like it took palm leaves? That was the ingenuity? Like, what are we? Is this Gilligan's Island? Like, we were really with Gilligan in the cruise now. They would never found him. I'm like, what? Don't you have a plane? Something? It took the palm. That was the ingenuity. That's what Lieutenant Chelsea Garcia said. The ingenuity of the palm leaves. I'm like, what? The message in the bottle thing didn't work. I'm like, what? Wally, did you have your hand up? I thought I thought this article. I thought it was insane. This is a real article. It was an NPR. They, Wally, is this where we're at now? Like, if you're lost on an island, don't use your phone. Don't do, try the message in the bottle, but then go right to palm leaves. That'll you know, it's it. it's it was so cliche and so like really. It's like they they had to go analog to get to get some attention. You know what I mean? It's so it was so basic. You know, but you, you see that like in movies, you're like, oh, that'll never work. Come on, man. Yeah. And basically, what, what did that teach us? That taught us, I, you know, <laughs> it's just Brittany, don't trust just, technology. So if you're lost on an island, maybe act out scenes from Castaway with Tom Hanks, and that'll get the <laughs> Coast Guard <laughs> going. Hey, we recognize that's from, Co that's from Castaway. Look, he's talking to a coconut named Wilson. That has saved him. That's it's just hysterical to me that it's three men doing an arts and crafts project to save their lives and get rescued. Like, it's just right. it's like, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> Laura, how long on the island did two of them go like, stop it? No one's going to look at the palm leaves. They argued the whole time. Like, look, they just the, the ship. They do the palm leaves and the ship just pulls right up. Like right there, they like, argued oh, the, the ship's whole here. time for it. You know what? Good for them. They spelled it right. I'm like honestly proud. Good for them. You're right. They yeah. sell something else. They're like, I don't think that's humans. They wrote hope or hump or something <laughs> ridiculous. So, all right, we only have a minute left. We didn't even get to the Civil War movie, which is opening, which I do want to see, which yes. is opening up. But so I just want to give to everyone time to plug what you're working on. And so let's start with Laura. Laura. Where can people find you, website, shows, whatever you'd like to plug? Please go. You can absolutely find me on Instagram at Laura Laham, L-A-U-R-A-L-A-H-A-M. Uh, that's where I'm most active. You can see me on the Big Brown show coming up on the 21st of April, uh, along with Dean and Wally. It'll be a great time. I'm really excited for that. So come on out and, and enjoy the night. Brittany, if you were only just a little browner, you'd be Brittany Brave in the Brown Show. So, I identify at no, I'm kidding. Um <laughs> so where, can, where can people see your your stuff and everything you're doing? Because you're touring all the time now. 
I am. I am going to be uh, Brittany Brave on Instagram, B-R-I-T-T-A-N-Y, because uh, there's a bazillion ways to spell Brittany and Brave, my very, unfortunately, very patriotic American last name, really my last name. Um, yeah, I will be headlining at, at Chicago, Iowa City, Arlington, New Brunswick, New Jersey, Bridgeport, wow. Connecticut, um, probably spending more time back in New York City soon as well. So follow, say hello. Yeah. See, Brittany Brave, she's hilarious. And Mr. Collins, what about you, buddy? Um, I'm doing a lot of private stuff, but I'm doing this little little ditty called uh, Big Brown Show on the 21st at the comic strip. Um, yeah, definitely come out. It's one of my favorite shows, and I gotta admit, your audiences are amazing, Dean. I I, well, have, I, just, I love doing that show. So, well, they're uh, brought there by people like you, and they've been to the show. I I produced the show for like twelve or thirteen years. Like it's been the longest running. It started as the only Brown show. Then there were some competitors, and I crushed them. And good. then they're no, they're around. <laughs> so, and I'm happy they're there. Whatever. I do the show three times a year, and and, and people come out. It's always a supportive, fun audience. So, Laura May Soon's Eye is on the show a lot is in that show as well, of course, and Eman Morgan and others. So, well, I want to thank all of you guys for being on. You were great. A lot of fun. And I have a great weekend.